What's up everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now. And please don't forget to hit that like button after the video. It helps the channel out and I would really, really appreciate it. All right guys, today we have a new unboxing. It is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Ultimate April O'Neil. Now this is based off the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. And this is pretty awesome because not only are we getting April O'Neil, but we're also getting a Casey Jones unmasked version from the movie. So that's pretty damn cool that they're doing this. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the exclusive version of this. The exclusive version comes with a yellow raincoat and a pass. Let me post it up on the screen now. So as you can see, it's actually called the Signature Edition April O'Neil. And it comes with a yellow raincoat and a Channel 3 press pass. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get one because as soon as NECA put the pre-orders up, they sold out in seconds. I'm even lucky I got the regular version because even that sold out in seconds. So without further ado, let's take a look at the box on a 360. Oh wow, check that out. That little effect on the screen of the TV on the front cover, that looks cool. And you can see the actual figure looks amazing on the side of the box. And right here on the back of the box, you can see three different pictures of the figure itself. And it really looks outstanding, guys. But that's just the picture. Let's see how the actual figure looks in my hand. That's when we're going to be able to tell how good this actually looks. That's pretty badass that they added that little effect on the TVs on the front box. I love that. That looks really, really good. All right, so it's time for me to take out this figure out of this box. And you know that's going to be a challenge. You know NECA with their little straps on the arms, on the neck, and all that stuff. But I always do appreciate NECA doing that because it just protects the figure from getting damaged during shipping. All right, it's time to take her out of this box and let's do that now. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you guys that this actually has a little window where you can see the figure. And on the left side, you can see April O'Neil, the actual figure posed up. It's a really nice picture there. All right, so let's cut this with my trusty knife. Or you could call it a little razor blade. Let's cut it right here. Here we go. The anticipation. <laughs> Alright, let's take her out of here. Alright, so like I said guys, she's already strapped on a lot of wiring. You can see it on her legs. Now check this out. This actually has a little picture background. So in case you want to pose her up, you can use this background. You just got to take it out of this box. And that is definitely something I'm not doing right now because I want to take a look at this figure first. All right, here she is. As you can see, she has a lot of wiring on her legs, her neck, I believe. I'm not sure, but let's take out the trusty blade. Let me cut this. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't think this is a regular wiring. I think this is the, this is a piece of tape right here. Yeah, these are the wires you can actually just undo them. You don't really have to cut them or anything. But still, regardless, this is going to take some time. So let me fast forward the video so we can skip ahead. Alright, so these are the four different hands she comes with besides the one she already has on. This hand right here has the finger pointing. The detail on it is pretty damn nice. I like it. And this one right here is her holding something. I guess a microphone, a weapon, or anything pretty much in her hand. 
What I didn't notice is she has a ring on her thumb. I never saw that in the movie, so I don't know if it's like that. But you can see it again. The ring is on her thumb. This is a closed fist. And this one is her left hand. I guess she's holding an item as well. Microphone, the side that she comes with, her purse. But you better be careful because the pegs are very, very little as you can see. Now this is the side she pulled out of her purse when she was confronted by the foot soldiers in the subway. But I also do remember she wasn't able to use it because she's not experienced to use a weapon like this. So when they knocked it out of her hand, she had to use her purse to defend herself. And that didn't work either. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is Raphael's side. Now this is pretty cool. You have a stack of pizza boxes. Now you can't separate it because it's all stuck together. But this is a really good accessory in case you want to take pictures of the turtles, maybe holding a stack of pizzas. I mean, it's a really cool accessory that they added here. All right, so NECA giving us this stand kind of worries me about the figure. I have a weird feeling that I'm not going to be able to pose up this figure, stand her up because her balance is going to be like really off. But we're going to take a look at that in a second. And here we have her purse. Now the purse looks pretty damn awesome. I like the paint job that they have on this. But what I did notice is it looks like you're going to be chipping the paint off this bag every time you bend it. So try not to bend it too much. It's a damn shame that NECA actually added this paint to this bag. The material that they use for the bag, it's what's going to cause the paint to be chipping. So try to handle it with care as much as possible. As you can see, it has a slit. You could open up the bag. You could place little items in there. Let me try to put the side in there because that's where she carried this weapon. Uh, wait a minute. This is going to be a little bit difficult. Hold on. Let's try to open this up. No, I can't put it in there. Wow. Well, I guess you could put the rest of the accessories in there because, it's, I mean, it could hold stuff in there. It's a really good looking purse. I do like the paint job, but like I said, just be careful that you don't chip the paint. Handle the purse with care. All right, now here it is, April O'Neil. This is the actual figure and it looks freaking awesome. I love the head sculpture. I love the way the hair looks. It looks really good. Her face is on point. And this is just one of the head sculptures. We gotta take a look at the second one. But check out the vest, the shirt. Look at the wrinkles on the sleeve. That's really, really good. Look at this. I love the way the vest looks. Now these are the hands that it comes with. Check out the skirt. That looks good. Has a little slit right there. All right, now look at these knees. This looks horrible, NECA. What were you guys thinking when you did this? Look at the shoe. Now, oh my, what happened to the, look at the paint. And honestly, this is flimsy. This feels like it's weak. This is why NECA gave us that little stand because they knew this figure was gonna be a hard figure to pose. Hopefully it's not that difficult to pose her up for this video as I think it's gonna be, but we'll see. Take a look at the back of her hair. This looks awesome. I love the head sculpture. Now let's take a look at the second head sculpture, guys. Look at that. That is awesome. Now. It's almost identical to the first one that's already on the body, except she looks like she's smirking. She has like a little, little mini smile to her. But I love these head sculptures. They did a great job with them. All right, let's take a look at the second head sculpture a little bit more closer. So yeah, it's pretty much the same sculpt. The hair looks the same. The only difference is she has a smirk or a smile if you want to call it that. Now, like I said, guys, I haven't posed her up, but it was a pain in the butt to pose her up. This is why NECA freaking gave us that little stand. I'm not going to use it because it's black and I have a white background. So I have a clear stand for her. But NECA knew what they were doing because they knew this figure was going to be a hard figure to stand. 
And look how horrible the joints on the back of the knee and on the back of the ankles look. You can see it's a totally different color. Look at that. That is horrible, Neko. What were you guys thinking when you did this? I don't know how this was bypassed your guys to release this figure like this. This is horrible. Look at those knees. And for some reason, NECA decided to make the ankles swivel to the left and right. But the figure is so weak that every time you try to balance and stand the figure, the ankles turn to the left or turn to the right. And there's no balance at all whatsoever. Now, I understand that it's a female figure and the pegs are going to be smaller. But come on, guys. Now here I have all the NECA turtles from the movie and none of them is standing on no freaking stand, no base, no nothing to hold them up. But April, unfortunately, as you can see, I am using a clear stand for her. But besides that, it is such a cool view to see all four turtles interact with April O'Neil. I feel like I'm watching a scene from the movie. It is definitely a cool pose with all of them together. All right, so here I got April O'Neil in the back holding on to Michelangelo and Donatello. She's not using a stand. She's pretty much leaning up against them like she's holding these guys in a pose. But that's just so she doesn't fall down. But it's a pretty cool pose with all the four turtles plus Splinter in the front. Let's just take a look at those ankles and the knees on the back oh my god that looks so horrible now i'm not a pro at painting figures but i may have to paint over that because that looks so bad look at that all right so here we have april o'neill with the microphone in her hand and it looks like she's reporting on some breaking news but again, take away the fact that she can't stand on her own two feet. This is an awesome figure, guys. All right, guys, so we made it to the end of the video, and this is where I give you my rating from one through 10. Now, I would really appreciate it if you guys participate in rating this figure from one through 10. I'm really curious on what you guys think of this figure. Leave it in the comment section below and let me know. Now, what would I rate this figure from one through 10? I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an eight and a half now here's the reason why I give it an eight and a half when it comes down to balancing this figure and posing her up standing her up straight it is a difficult freaking thing to do plus her knees are horrible her ankles are horrible if you turn her around her nylon socks that she's wearing on the back of her knee it's a totally different color from her socks same thing with the ankles on her back I don't know how this went by these guys and released the figure this way. Plus, the female who played April O'Neil, I think her name is Judith Hogue. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it correctly. She had a lot of input making this figure. I mean, she was behind the scenes telling NECA this, telling NECA how to do this and that, how she looked this way, the stuff that she wore in the movie. I even remember she made a video stating that she was going to have a lot of input in making this figure or else she didn't want the figure to be released. She wanted to make sure that us, the collectors, were gonna get a really good April O'Neil. But unfortunately, I don't know what exactly happened, but maybe NECA didn't tell her how the legs were turning out. So I have no idea how this bypassed her and maybe the NECA guys. I, I don't know, I don't know what exactly happened here, but it is a really bad situation with those legs. What I think NECA should do is re-release this figure, maybe call it April O'Neil 2.0 and give it a complete makeover with those legs because I, honestly man like i really wanted to take some photos of this figure and it's really hard for me to pose her up and that's frustrating but other than that guys the figure is awesome it looks really good you get all these nice accessories plus you get an extra head and i really do appreciate NECA giving us an extra head but they could have made it a little bit of a difference with the expressions i mean the second head sculpture that you gave us has a little smirk on her face and it's not too much of a difference from the other head sculptor but like i said i do appreciate them even making another head for us now would i recommend this figure for you guys to go out there and go crazy and go hunting for it 
If you're a really big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 1990 movie, then I would say yeah, go out there and get it because you'll be happy that you got this for your collection. But you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because it only was released on the NECA store for pre-orders. So they haven't really released it to the stores yet. But if you're a person like myself that likes to take pictures of their figure posed up with other figures with different backgrounds, I may have to tell you to hold off on getting the figure because you're just gonna get frustrated trying to pose her up. It was very frustrating for me to make this video because I couldn't pose her up. Alright guys, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this unboxing. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now. And please don't forget to hit that like button after the video. It helps the channel out and I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys and I will see you on the next unboxing. Peace. It's strange being back on the old farm. Even after all these years, it still feels like home. My amazing new friends have suffered their first real defeat. That's bad enough, but they've also lost the opportunity to find out about their mentor, and I'm sure that hurts them much more than anything else. Each of them deals with this confusion in his own way. Donatello has found someone to latch on to. Leonardo, meanwhile, has kept a constant vigil with Raphael. And then there's Casey Jones. A nine-year-old trapped in a man's body. He might almost be cute if it wasn't for that pig-headedness.